Now let's talk about a very important aspect of level creation inside UDK, scale and proportion. When we created our basic BSP room, it was hard to tell how big that actual room is. The one that I use, and it helps me out a lot, is to create a scale reference using BSP geometry of a simple cube. It has the height and the depth and the width of a, a regular character inside UDK. So how big is this cube compared to everything else? If we look down here on the bottom on our grid, it says 16. That means every grid unit is 16 units. The character height inside Unreal is 96 units. So 96 units equals to about roughly 6 feet. That means that if our grid is set to 16, it would take 6 of these grid units to make the height of the character inside Unreal. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So here this would be the height of our character inside Unreal. So let's create a scale reference that we can use. Right click on the cube and uh, set 32 by 32 and 96. So here's our template. This is the scale reference of our character. If we add this, this would be a pretty accurate representation of 6 feet of the character and we could use the scale reference to reference the entire environment to and build and we will pretty much be building everything to proportion. This is a very important step that before building anything you should set a scale reference. So since we created this let's uh, just quickly add control A move the template builder brush and now we have our scale reference that we now can create the entire rooms and environment to. So let's add uh, a room and let's put that uh, scale reference inside and see how big we can create the room and see how everything references to each other now. So let's create the same dimension room that we had before. Uh, let's set it to 512, 512 and um, the height is 256. Now it's a lot easier to tell how big this room is and how big the character will be in that room. Control A. So now we have our simple room. Now we need to subtract from it so we can see inside. So let's subtract. Use 480 by 480 and 224. By pressing Control S or clicking on CSG subtract, we subtract our brush. Now we can move the template out, go inside, and we are inside the room. Now our scale model has disappeared. But if we go up on top, we have our scale model right in here. So let, let me talk about another very important function is the brush order. The brush order inside Unreal creates brushes based on when you created them in a sequence. Since we created our scale model first and then we added another brush on top, that messed up our brush order. So in order for us to fix this, right click on the scale reference, go to order, and set it to last. It was set to first when we created the brush, now we want to set it to last. And now all we need to do is we need to build geometry. And now we have our brush. Anytime you modify a brush, anytime you move a brush, anytime you scale anything that is a brush inside, we have to build geometry. So we just moved our scale reference right in here, but it doesn't update. That is because we need to build geometry. Head up, up on the top, build geometry. So anytime that you do not see a brush show up after you add it, first build geometry, and if that doesn't work, go into the wireframe mode, right click, and modify the order of that brush, and that should work. Let's talk about grid snaps. There are three options inside UDK to stay on the grid. We have drag grid, we have rotation grid, and we have scale grid. These three little check marks indicate that the grid snaps are enabled. Uh, the grid snaps are extremely important inside UDK. Uh, it aligns everything perfectly on the grid, like we see here. Turning them off usually leads to a lot of problems later on. So make sure these are on. For drag grid, we have options that we can change the grid to uh, a larger number or a smaller number. You can set this to 32, set this to 8, and so on. Shortcut, 4, 
changing the grid without going into the drop down menu is the bracket keys. So here I'm using the left bracket key and the right bracket key to decrease and increase the grid. And here you can see that uh, the n this number will change from 16 to 8 to 4 and so on. For rotation grid we have, let me move this up, uh, we have degrees. And scale grid we can set this to uh, percentage. Uh, so staying on the grid is is very important. Uh, when you work off the grid and you try to get back on it, it's it's extremely hard to align your static meshes afterwards. Let's talk about various viewport options that you have at your disposal. When we first launched the UDK, you are presented with four screens. You have your perspective viewport, uh, your top viewport, and side and front. So let me open up a map that comes with UDK. Vehicle, capture the flag necropolis. Each viewport has an option. Maximize viewport. Click on that, it enlarges the viewport. Uh, if you prefer a different way to look at the viewports instead of the four viewports, we can go up to view, viewport configuration, and we can choose 2x2 two two split, 1x2 one split, 1x1, one one, uh, horizontal and vertical. So if we choose that, here we have the horizontal split. At the very top, each viewport has specific options for that view. Let's talk about the various viewport view options. The first one is the brush wireframe. We can see everything in the wireframe mode. The next one is the wireframe. We have unlit mode. We have lit mode. And we have lighting only. We can see how everything looks with no textures. We have lighting complexity texture density, shader complexity, light map density, and lighting only with texel density. So each one of these have a specific function uh, for a specific purpose throughout the process of your level design. Another option that we have at our disposal is real time. So let me go back to lit mode. And so here you can test and see uh, particle effects at work. And if we turn that off, everything stops. Uh, there's also another very useful key which is the game mode and the game mode turns everything off that's not supposed to be viewable inside the game such as all the entities all the nodes uh, all the brushes it turns everything off and presents the viewport exactly as it would look in game so using the game mode and the real time together you can get a very accurate representation of what your level would look like in game another option is the camera movement speed inside the viewport allows you to quickly go in your large environment uh, from place to place and if you need more fine-tuned detail uh, just switch your camera movement speed the left click to cycle through or right click and choose which one you need another option we have is play in viewport if I click this button and we can jump inside the viewport and actually play our game inside the viewport and if we hit escape we jump back out so this allows us to quickly jump in the game and test everything out, see how everything looks. So uh, for various steps throughout the production, you'll be using quite a few of these uh, viewport view options, as well as show, hiding, and unhiding uh, various of these items, depending on so, uh, what you're working on at the time. With that, this concludes the UDK basic section. This should give you the basic understanding of how the UDK functions and what you need to know in order for you to jump in there and start feeling comfortable using the interface, the content browser, uh, brushes, and all the things that we covered so far.